Hi there, I'm Brian, one of the hose specialists here at your 100% Canadian hose supplier, Greg Distributors. And today on Heads Up for Hosiers, we're going to be talking about the SAE split flange. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but every connection in a hydraulic system is a potential leak point. Hydraulic systems that have fewer sealing points are preferred because they are more stable and tend to last longer. This is why the SAE split flange fitting is one of the best fittings on the market. This fitting connects directly to the port on a motor or pump and seals by using an O-ring. This connection is strictly a port connection. The ingenious design means that there is only one possible leak point, the O-ring. This lack of leak points makes the SAE split flange connector one of the best there is to offer when it comes to hydraulic systems. While other fittings use threads to hold themselves into the port, the SAE flange fitting actually uses these pieces called flange clamps to connect to the port. This means what is used to hold the fitting in place and what seals the fitting are two completely separate components. The flange components are used to hold the fitting in place and the O-ring is used to seal the system. These flanges are held into the port with bolts and washers. The flat surface of the face compresses the O-ring contained in the flange head, thus sealing the hydraulic pressure and completing the connection. Split flange connectors have many advantages over other types of connections when used with a port. As we said before, there is only one potential leak point, the O-ring. Since this connection is a sexless fitting, meaning that it has no threads, this fitting can be orientated in any direction. When space is a concern, this connection eliminates the need for large wrenches that are required to tighten a swivel nut, like on other types of fittings. With the split flange connection, a socket and ratchet is all that is needed to tighten the connector. Over the years, hydraulic systems have increased in pressure. Because of this, a high pressure series of the split flange connection had to be developed. The lower pressure series is called Code 61, and the higher pressure series is called Code 62. Whereas the Code 61 series is good to pressures up to 3,000 PSI, equivalent to your typical scuba tank, the Code 62 series is good up to 6,000 PSI. Later, we will show you how to tell the difference between the two. Since the sealing of the split flange fitting does not take place on the threads, but instead on the O-ring, this makes the fitting highly reusable. Here at Greg Distributors, we recommend replacing the O-ring every time the fitting is reused. We offer a wide range of sizes, materials, and thicknesses to fit your recommended needs. Although we do recommend always replacing the O-ring of the split flange connector with a 90 durometer one. Now hold on, durometer of an O-ring? What the heck is that? Durometer is a measure of hardness of a material. Higher the number, the harder the material, and vice versa. By hardness, we mean the material's resistance to indentation. For example, chewing gum has a durometer of 25. An automotive tire is 70. And skateboard wheels are 98. So, in relation to O-rings, it's important to have an O-ring with a proper durometer so it can handle the pressures you are going to be dealing with. O-rings with lower durometer stretch easier and seal better on rougher surfaces. The lower side of an O-ring durometer is 70, and this is typically good for pressures up to 3,000 PSI. Code 61 fittings typically come with a 70 durometer O-ring. Higher durometer, 90, O-rings have a greater abrasion resistance and a greater resistance to extrusion, and are good up to 6,000 PSI. Code 62 fittings come with a 90 durometer O-ring. So, if you are in a pinch, you're always safe choosing a 90 durometer O-ring. Now back to the fittings at hand. SAE split flange connectors come in a variety of sizes from dash 8 to dash 32. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck is a dash size? Well, a dash size is the determination of sizes for hoses, tubes, and fitting measurements. This is measured in 1 16 inch segments. In this video series, we'll deal mostly with hose and fittings. But note that for tubing, the dash size calculation is slightly different. Here is a hose example. When dealing with most types of hose, 
dash four equals four one sixteenth inch segments, which equals four sixteenths, or equal to one quarter of an inch hose ID. The split flank connection is easy to identify because it's very unique in its design. As you see here, it has a threadless design with an O-ring in the face of the flange that creates the seal. You'll also notice that there's a slight chamfer on the inside of the fitting. This is to allow the hydraulic fluid running through the system to flow easily into the fitting and create less friction and therefore less heat. So after we have identified this fitting, we need to then determine the size of the connector we are dealing with. To do so, we will measure the porthole diameter. Although you can do this with a caliper, we suggest that you use the ruler part of the calipers on the face of the fitting so there is no confusion of which part the porthole we are measuring. We see here we get one inch. Looking in our identification book, we see that this is a dash 16 fitting. So once we know the dash size of the fitting, next we have to confirm whether it's a code 61 or code 62 connector. We have a few ways to confirm which series this connector is. First, we will measure the flange head diameter, which is the distance of the entire ceiling head of the fitting. Here, we see we get one and seven eighths. Referring to our identification book, we see that this is a dash 16 connector with one and seven eighths flange head. This is a code 62 fitting. Here, we have another flange connector. So to start, we will measure the porthole diameter. Here, we see we get one inch again. Next, we will measure the flange head diameter. Now we get one and three quarters. Referring to our book again, we can confirm that this fitting is a code 61-16 fitting. When comparing the two fittings, we see that there's a clear difference in the size of the flange heads of the fittings, even though they both have the same porthole diameter of one inch. In this way, we can see the clear difference between the Code 61 and the Code 62 fittings. And this is why it's important to be able to identify the differences between them. If we are measuring off the port, We will use this mock flange block to demonstrate a port. Again, we will start with measuring the porthole diameter. We get one inch. We now know that we need a dash 16 flange connector to connect to this. But how do we determine if it's a code 61 or a code 62 connection? We will now measure the bolt hole spacing. To do this, we will measure the longest bolt hole spacing from center to center. Now it's hard to find the exact center of the bolt holes, so here's a little trick. We can actually measure the top of the bolt hole to the top of the bolt hole. We get two and one quarter inches. Referring to our identification book, We see that for a dash 16 fitting with two and one quarter inch, we can see that this is a code 62 connection. This is the same process if you are measuring either the porthole spacing or the flange half bolt spacing. Next, we can measure the bolts that are included with either the code 61 or code 62 flanges. Because the bolts have different specs for code 61 and code 62 fittings, it's important to know how to identify the proper bolts for each flange type. The first step is to measure the outside diameter of the bolt. Here we get 7 16ths, 
on this bolt. Next, we are going to measure the length of the bolt underneath the head. We get one and three quarters. We will now open our book back up to the split flan page and find where we have a 7 16th bolt and one and three quarters bolt length. This shows us that this bolt is meant for a dash 16 code 62 flange fitting. We can then confirm this by thread pitch. It says here 7 16 dash 14 by one and three quarters where the dash 14 means threads per inch. Taking out our thread pitch gauge, we find number 14. Lay the number 14 on the threads and confirm that this bolt is, in fact, for a dash 16 code 62 fitting. Identification can get a little bit tricky, as there are a few different type of variations of flange fittings. We will quickly go over a few of the most common ones and how to tell the difference between them. The first type is the code 62 cat flange connector. Caterpillar makes her own version of what is almost identical to the SAE Code 62 four bolt split flange. The major difference is the size of the flange head as seen here. The SAE Code 62 ranges from 0.345 of an inch on the half inch flange to 0.495 of an inch on the two inch flange. Caterpillar makes their flange head thickness 0 0.560 of an inch on all their four bolt flanges. SAE Code 62 can be substituted for cat flange connectors, provided that you change the flange halves as well, as the cat flange is thicker. Another type of fitting that is closely related to the SAE split flange connector is the Komatsu style flange. The Komatsu style flange fitting is identical to and fully interchangeable with the Code 61 flange fitting except for in a number 10. Something to note, when replacing a Komatsu style flange with an SAE style flange, an SAE style O-ring must always be used. Code 61 and Code 62 flange clamps also come in a one-piece style as well, like we see here. These are called captive flanges. They will measure the same way as the split flanges, but are only in one piece. Now the first thing you want to do when installing a split flange connection is inspect all components and make sure that they are free of any debris, nicks, scratches, or damage to the O-ring. If the O-ring is damaged, replace it with a new one. Once you have an O-ring seated in the face of the fitting, it appears to be in good condition, lubricate the O-ring with oil from the system. Next, we will position the flange connector and clamp halves onto the port. Place the lock washers on the provided bolts and insert through the clamp halves and into the tapped holes. We will now tighten these bolts down hand tight. For split flange connections, there are different torque specs for different dash sizes in both the Code 61 or the Code 62. These torque specs can be found by contacting our order desk or easily online. Once the bolts are hand tight, torque the bolts in diagonal sequence as seen here in small increments to the appropriate torque spec. This is important to avoid pinching the connector tighter on one side, which can give your O-ring a path to escape. Once you have torqued the bolts to the proper spec, there is a required clearance of between 0.010 to 0.030 inches under the flange halves. Failure to leave this clearance can result in a bent bolt or broken flange half. A good way to have people check the clearance is to present them with your business card, which is about 0.02 of an inch, and have them slide it under the flange halves. You will want to use this test in several locations, especially under the bolts. When reinstalling a split flange connection, here at Greg's, we recommend that you always replace the flange halves, O-rings, bolts, and washers with new ones, as almost always they will be bent from torquing. 
Well, that's it for this intensive episode of Heads Up for Hosers. I'm going to split for now, but if you have any more questions, call into our order desk and a friendly Canadian hoser will be there to help you out. Also, remember to have a great Canadian day. Bye now.